Once I started elk hunting, my life changed. Those days spent in the mountains opened my eyes to an aspect of the world that I had failed to experience. It was a world filled with wild places, fueling some deep-rooted instinct to explore the unknown. The solitude and the experience of elk hunting really resonated within me, and immediately I knew I was hooked for life. For me, elk hunting is often more about the locations it takes me than it is the elk that I'm chasing. It's the sun slowly filtering through the timber and the night spent watching the world turn. Elk hunting is a challenge, a challenge that I take on fully. My instinct drives me and regardless of where I wander, it's always a difficult road ahead. It's tiring both physically and mentally. It's miles and miles of hiking and hours upon hours behind the glass. In the end, when it all comes together and you get to immerse yourself in that one moment, a moment when the world slows down and it's just you and the elk, well, that's when you fully realize how blessed you actually are. To lay your hands on a bull at the end of the day, well, that's just icing on the cake. This year, our elk season started in the Missouri breaks. We arrived three days early to scout and hopefully get a beat on a few mature bulls for opening day. After the 600 mile drive east, we pulled into an area we had found on Google Earth, expecting the best. Right off the bat, we were able to locate a nice mature six point bedded in the bottom of a long shaded draw. We watched him for about 20 minutes before moving down the ridge and glassing the adjacent coulee. Once again, we spotted a mature bull bedded in the shade. This would be our third year elk hunting and quickly appeared that our homework was starting to pay off. As the sun set, we backed out, knowing that this would be a promising location for opening morning. The next two days, we again ventured into some new areas, hoping to find a true Missouri breaks giant. The country here is vast, and with the numerous coolies, draws, and pockets of timber, a bull can really pop up at any time. We put in a lot of miles and spent a lot of hours behind the glass, only locating a handful of small bulls. The decision was made to move back to where we had located those three bulls on the first day and meet up with our good friend, Tyler McCann. Opening morning found us pinned on top of a bluff. Below us were four bulls working up the hillside and headed straight for us. Our location didn't allow us to move and we simply had to wait, hoping their path would bring them to within bow range. After a few minutes, we could hear a bull slowly making his way up through the grass below. The guys were ready and we hoped a shot would present itself. All I saw was tips. The biggest bull we didn't even see to begin with was straight velvet. And he came up and I drew back and I held my draw for the longest time. But the second I drew back and I was holding there, he lifted his head and looked right at me. They busted out down below and the rest is history. Got a second shot on another bull. Took it and uh, hopefully we can go find my bull now. Right here. 
riled up. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He took that tree out. What a prick. Maybe with all three of us freaking. Loving every minute of it. First bowl, 2012, opening morning, 6.45. Pretty cool, man. Over the course of the next two weeks, Travis and I continued to devote the middle of September to hunting elk in the breaks. The sun rarely gave us a break, and daily temperatures often soared into the 90s, forcing the elk to be active in only the first couple hours after dawn and before dark. Regardless, we got to see a lot of bulls and put on multiple stalks, but the difference between getting close and letting an arrow fly seemed to be monumental. The breaks is a love-hate relationship. Sometimes you're in mature bulls every day, and then you might go a week with only one encounter to show for. Finally, we pulled the plug and loaded up the truck. We hit the road with a new destination in mind, the thick timber of Northwest Montana. Now the Northwest corner of the state is a stark contrast to the Missouri breaks. The deep, nasty black timber here is mysteriously beautiful, yet awful at the same time. It's a place where your imagination runs wild, wondering what lurks in these deep, dark woods. The bushes grow high overhead in most spots, and just navigating is a constant battle that quickly fatigues you. It's a totally different ball game out there, and there's really only two ways to kill a bull. Call them to within 20 yards and hope you have a shot, or ambush them. After two and a half days, Travis and I felt like we were in a losing battle. The elk were silent, and after multiple stands each day, we had failed to locate a vocal bull. We had explored lots of new country and found plenty of sign. Impressive rubs left us shaking our heads and wondering what the next step should be. On the last morning of our hunt, we decided to locate some water. We drove down to a small reservoir and looked for sign. Immediately we found a wallow etched into the ground from years of use. A small natural blind was nestled into the edge of the timber and a feeling began to creep over us. With plenty of daylight left to burn, we quickly decided to go call a new spot before making a final decision for the evening hunt. Earlier today we checked out a new spot, kind of cruised around for about an hour and now we're back in the truck. We're heading back to that wallow we found earlier today. It's right on the side of this reservoir and it's definitely been getting hit by the elk. Saw some bear tracks in there and I got a few tags in the pocket so we're crossing our fingers that tonight something's going to walk out and hopefully give me a shot. So It's going to be an interesting sit. Elk are really quiet right now, so we're just going to mix it up, see if something like this will work for us.
After getting settled into the blind, we began the slow process of waiting, watching, and wondering if our gut feeling was the right one. Only an hour into the sit, and Travis heard something headed our way. I was laying down a little bit ago and I was like, I can't be laying down and have something catch me. So I sit up like five minutes later, Travis is like, I hear something, I hear something. I got ready, bull came right here, eight yards. Stared us down. He was working right over to that little wallow. He stopped right there, 30 yards. I was shaking. I'm definitely not used to holding my bow that long. I think I smoked him though. I definitely saw blood coming out. Definitely got lungs, I'm pretty sure. That bull came out right here. And we're right there. I can't believe he didn't pick us off. I'm at full draw. Travis is there with the camera. 